Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I think you can hear me uh, clearly. If you are not, uh, just raise your hand. And yeah, so first, who I am? Uh, I double with open source. Uh, I have overall, hi everybody, welcome. I did lots of different things. And so I started uh, patching software in Gen2. So I had pretty much experience all the possible uh, issues and gotchas that you could uh, see with build systems and languages. And that's why I do not like C++. And uh, I do write uh, lots of multimedia code. And for that, uh, I had to deal with uh, increasing complexity. Hi. OK, you cannot hear. Now you can hear me. Good. I had to deal with uh, complex code, but I need to also deliver uh, proper performance. So my experience is most of the languages and most of the build system sucks. And uh, for what I do, uh, at least in the past, C at assembly was the only uh, solution that uh, gets you result. So why I'm talking here? Well, uh, we have Rust. Rust is uh, fast enough or really fast in execution, not compilation time. And at the same time, it's fairly predictable. So there is something that now is a good competitor compared to C for uh, my interest. And uh, why I'm talking about moving from C to Rust and Rust to C? Well, when you are dealing with a new project, you want to, well, be effective. So you start thinking, OK, I want to write the code. I want to get my new toy. How much time am I going to spend doing something different, as in setting up the project, as in making so that I have the tests that are working uh, correctly so I, I know what I'm doing? Uh, how much I can uh, reuse from my past projects, from all the open source software. So how much I cannot just do again, because reinventing square wheels is fun, but just up to a point. So usually you have two choices. You can jump on a new language. So some problems could have a better solution or a new solution. Or you can stay on your well-known mature language that usually has its pros and cons, but usually it's uh, fairly uh, well known, at least to you. So we have C in my uh, case that is quite a mature language, lots of different code that is available, lots of software that pretty much everybody uses is written in C. So why not using C? We have Rust, sort of new, lots of annoying problems got solved the right way from the beginning. Uh, let's give a try to Rust. Moving from C to Rust. So, yes? Oh, sorry. So, we want C because we want something that uh, works very well and is not surprising. A bonus point of C. The ABI of C is simple, that simple. So every other language can consume C libraries. Why would we want to use Rust? First selling point of Rust, it prevents you from making a huge amount of mistakes that incidentally are all the mistakes that are currently security issues most of the time. So 
if the compiler prevents you from making errors, you are not going to make them. And that's pretty great. Uh, Rust is an higher level language in ways, but at the same time, you are not paying for the abstraction. Actually, you get a, a speed boost if you are using the abstraction the proper way. An iterator gives the compiler more information so the compiler can unroll your code or even up to vectorize the code in a much more effective way compared to other language. A for loop in C uh, get the compiler a bit blind on what it can do or what it cannot do. And uh, the whole ecosystem is driving. You have lots and lots of lots of promising or even already good libraries and good tools written in pure Rust. Why we don't want to write everything in Rust? Well, the ABI is not set in stone. We don't have shared library if it's just Rust code. That uh, if you are a distribution and uh, you want to package everything and so on and so forth, that means that you have a size uh, constraint that uh, is not going to make you happy. If you have just your single instance with just that application, you don't care. But this is a problem. Uh, something that is fair to say, Rust is not saving you every time. Logic mistakes do happen and then you have to deal with the debugger and so on to find them. Trade-offs, cost opportunity. So what we can do? Well, we would like to mix them. We would like to take our past experience, our past code, and either rewrite something that is completely fishy because uh, she is not helping you to avoid bugs in Rust and hopefully even get a speed up in the normal C version, or you have your lovely kernel, routine, whatever, written in assembly that works to the, well, theoretical uh, max speed for your target CPU and you want to use it. Why are we trying to redo that? You know that works, it's a function, the boundary of the function is pretty much well defined, so it's safe to use. And well, in Rust you can do. Uh, there is a very simple way to consume CABI symbols and to produce them as well. So mixing them is feasible and is quite easy. So extra simple example. We have a lib.rs that contains our hello Rust. We have a main.c that is the usual uh, C main. And we want to get everything together and execute it. How to do that? In Rust, you can uh, decorate your structure and say, uh, please represent them in memory in a certain way. There is the Rust way in which you can be more efficient because the field get reordered so you don't have memory holes. Or is the C way. So the order is that you have to pad them so they are naturally aligned for their type. You have problem with uh, memory holes, but well, who cares? You want to be compatible. Uh, you have extern that is telling the compiler, hey, that symbol, that function has to be exported or imported from C. And no mangle, since I'm pretty sure that all of you know, Rust has uh, a symbol mangling strategy, so the names get um, mangled in a, in a certain way so you don't have a uh, collision. And see what you write what is what is in the binary and you end up colliding quite often. You can say, no mangle, the symbol name is the one that I'm going to consume in C. And then you have some help from the standard library, mainly with the proper types, 
and if you want to uh, make some match further, there is the libc create that lets you call the libc function directly from Rust. So the other part, how to tell the compiler that we want something. We have static lib that gets us the static library. And uh, since the static library is static but is not standalone most of the time, we have a way to print the libraries, the system libraries that we want to link to in order to get something that is workable. So print native static libs give us that. Not exactly in a great way, and we'll see later, but uh, we have it. We got covered. So really simple code. The first part, our hello, that is doing pretty much nothing besides printing. And since we are printing, we need to use the standard libraries. So we need to bring in all the dependency that depending on your platform could be pthread, lib, the matlib, or just, uh, well, your C library if it's uh, standalone. And our C code is pretty stupid. We got the prototype and then we got to call it. How to do that? How to call the compiler? I say rest C, create type static lib, lib.rs, and we get our liblib.a. Horrible name, I know. Uh, we want to get our native libraries, and I say this is a bit cumbersome because Rust C gives you the information if you use the print command, but it gets on the standard error and uh, the whole thing has to be parsed because it's in a note column and then uh, the proper string. So you can use grep and cut, you can do whatever you want. You have to deal with that, you have to uh, capture the standard error from uh, the compiler. This part should be uh, made easier, and there is an issue open for that. Second part, it's completely straightforward. You call the C compiler, you co pass the libraries, you get your main, you call it, and it works. I say, the hard part, the part that usually make you uh, cry blood in other languages are easy. You don't see them, actually. You don't see the problems. ABI compatibility is done. You don't have problems. You don't have to deal with any kind of issue. Uh, object code uh, generation in a static archive. You get that dot A. Uh, you don't have to think about that. You don't have to. Uh, edit the binary or do whatever, convert the bytecode. No, it just work. Getting the static library that you have to link in in the system, because that's what, how the static libraries work, uh, you have a solution, is feasible, is usable, is brittle. This part has to be fixed, in my opinion. Uh, so this part works. What I glossed over, well, the symbol name, we made the prototypes, we put the prototypes in the code uh, by hand. It's a single symbol, it's fine. Yeah, a few thousand symbols is not fine. You want to automate it. We have a way to do that. Uh, build system support. Since I just called the compilers directly, we would like to not do that. The build system are there to solve this problem. But, uh, okay, the traditional build system are not exactly great. Mason tried, Bezel tried, uh, doesn't work for us. Uh, direct support for Rust C in those build system is 
between minimal and uh, incomplete. So give up on that, trust me. Uh, cargo as OSBIL system do work. Build .rs let you do lots of things. We have good integration. We have good way to get the C compiler and make it work as it should. Good, not great. Uh, so if you're using Bezel and you are happy with that, good for you. Everybody else, ignore it. It's way too complex. Mason is great, is awesome. Uh, for Rust, is not there. So sorry about that. Those are the best two options if you really want to try. Those are not going to get you far. So uh, we have to do something different. We could just use cargo from the uh, host build system. Feels a bit of contraction. It is a contraction. Rube Gorder would be uh, really proud of you, but works much better. Uh, we see that in the wild. LibRSVG uh, does that. Uh, re, re, uh, ReadyBC does that. It works, works quite well, and uh, well, delivers you something that you can use. So nothing to say about that beside that you have additional complexity. You have two different build systems that have to talk with each other. That means that some information has to move from one to the other. And the way to do that is a bit complex, a bit brittle, works, but you would like to do that better. And there are really better solutions if you are a C uh, project and you want to put little bit of rust here and there to solve your problems. This is currently the best way to do that. Uh, good part. Uh, most of the problem got solved. You have good examples, so you can just copy the examples and sort of be happy up to a point. If you get through different paths, probably you will have more problems. Uh, this part hopefully will be fixed if the Amazon people start to uh, get better way to integrate or if Cargo managed to export more information in a easier way so Amazon can use it. So I say we have tools to automate and avoid problems. C engine is pretty great if we want to consume something that is written in C. So you don't have to write your symbol export uh, table because it's going to do that for you. Uh, Kango Bender is something that you have to consider when you are packaging your uh, project because Cargo is awesome. Cargo lets you uh, fetch all the dependency. You can use Cargo Lock to pin the dependency. If you don't have internet, you are pretty much well, you have to do something. Kango Vendor is going to solve that for you. So if you are doing a, a new release, use Kango, Cargo Vendor and provide a bundle. Some religion is uh, going to consider you an heretic. Most distribution are going to, uh, uh, well, avoid that, change it, do whatever. The normal user is going to appreciate a lot because you can have some normal user in that situation. Even more if it's a C user, so it's not expecting Cargo to do something with the network. We want to do the opposite. Why not? So the dual of the previous example, a lib.c and a main.rs. Here I'm trying to show you a little difference between C and Rust that is a common pitfall. So our C code, we have a static array of uh, chars, not a string, and our function. 
and we are calling also something from the libc. So, Rust code, what's the difference from before? Well, you can see I'm using the FFI part of the standard library to have uh, a way to interface between the C null pointer array of uh, chars and our concept of uh, proper string. Beside that, the code is as simple as that. Just we are converting from one to the other. You have to keep that in mind because most of the time you tend to forget. So you have this lovely pointer that you try to use as is. And well, the compiler is going to tell you that there is a problem, but you could uh, try to persist in doing that and then you will are going to enjoy a sec fault. Uh, how to call it? As simple as before, uh, main difference, I'm calling our AR directly instead of uh, passing two uh, C files to make the .a library, but it's just a single small uh, detail. How to link uh, C ABI code in Rust? Minus L, you can be explicit and say, okay, I want the static library, not the dynamic, and that's it. Simple, right? We are using exactly the same tools for that. External C to consume the symbol, not to export in this case. We are using unsafe because the C code is using bare pointers, so it is inherently unsafe. So the compiler is going to complain until you shut it off. Uh, as I said before, I'm calling uh, AR in the example it's just a detail. Something important. The link line here is implicit. As in, I assume that I'm linking the same part of the libc that the, my C code is using in this case. Not big deal. Standard IO usually is not a split in most of the operating systems. Trade with care, you have to deal with that if you're using some math library or something that is uh, split from the main libc in your platform you have to care and nobody is going to help you you don't have the compiler telling you hey those are the libraries that you would like to link to this is something that you have to be careful of so what we can use to automate we have Bindgen, that is doing the, um, well, the opposite of C Bindgen. So you consume the C headers instead of reducing them. Uh, if you're calling the function, you have an unsafe. You have bare pointers. Uh, usually what you do is you wrap the bare pointers with proper struct. You do implement drop, so you are not leaking memory because leaking memory is safe, but it's not something that you want to do. And uh, if it's something that you are importing in your uh, Rust project, you can use build.rs with some crates. cc.rs is uh, the go-to solution if you have just a .c that you want to build or some uh, gas file. NASM RS is something that you need if you are dealing with uh, Intel assembly and does work pretty well. If you are doing something that is um, larger, you can use CMake or AutoTools directly from there. There are crates for that. Uh, bonus point, we have method apps and PKG config support so if you if you want just to use uh, libraries installed in the system, you have an, e an easy way to do that. Now, we are making something a little more complex because we just saw how to do that with uh, 
static library. Dynamics library bring a bit of a problem. Mainly because the dynamic library is something that is an uh, intimate detail of your operating system. So if you have some Linux, the dynamic link linker would like to know the version of your dynamic library. But if you are on Android, the dynamic linker doesn't care. If you are on FreeBSD, the versioning is li uh, sli uh, slightly different. If you are on completely different systems, Mac, slightly different rules, mainly the linker doesn't want even to know about the installed path in a proper way. So more information that you have to move from your knowledge of the system or your BIS system to your compiler. So here is the example, exactly the same code, but we are trying to make a shared library. So this is what you are going to do if you want to support at the same time Mac and a BSD or Linux-like uh, system. So in one case, you have this line to say, OK, compiler, I want a shared library, and I want to put this version information. Or we are on Mac. OK, compiler, still shared library. But uh, keep in mind that this library will be installed in this place with this version that is compatible with this one. A bit more, a bit verbose. As you notice, there is no Windows here. Would be about mm, two or three pages of uh, slides just to start to get something going. But from the right side, simple. You just say, OK, my library has to be dynamic. And then the compiler does everything for you, mostly. So all easy, all simple, beside the problem that the library is a bit interesting to compile. Do we want to do the other way around? So we have our wonderful Rust code, and we want to export it or mm, well, provide it to the main system as a shared library. So the same uh, platform uh, specific flags for the linker had to be passed. And no, in this case, the Rust compiler is not smart. Doesn't have the information inside itself. So exactly the same thing. Uh, you pass the information to the linker by doing minus C link arg, and then you pass the arguments. The create type, cdlib, since we want a C dynamic library, and then you, we consume it as usual. It's nearly simple beside the fact that I glossed over all the, the part of uh, figuring out what you have to pass to the linker. You have to know what you are doing, or your build system does know for you. Probably you know about libtool that uh, has all this information. The same uh, logic, the same code is present in Mason, in CMake, and everywhere. So basically, you have to make a large uh, list of different ways to behave depending on your target system. And obviously, if you are cross-compiling, you have to get the right thing. Uh, one detail. Uh, PKG config is something important, because it's what, uh, in most of the platform, lets you properly link your library in case you have uh, further dependencies. That is important if you have you are dealing with static libraries, because their information is usually not embedded in the dynamic library. 
in other system like Linux, the information is part of the, well, is in, in a, is it a specific health section. So one way to do that is editing the section after the fact. It's not great though. So we don't want to use directly the compiler. So we want to use a build system. We don't want to do uh, binary editing to fix the, fi the thing so the, si the system is fine or the dynamic linker is doing the right thing. We do not want to uh, keep the translation between Rust and C for our symbol that are shared. Definitely, we do not want to uh, hand write the pickup uh, gconfig file, mainly because it's system dependent as well. So, ways to do that. One, we can copy what uh, happens in RSVG, and is okay, we have some auto tools integration that is giving us most of the information. We are just building static libraries from the Rust side. We put everything together. The user is not going to see anything different. The .h are what they are. Uh, since the surface area is small enough, you don't have to do uh, uh, automatic generation because, well, some internal interface that uh, is not going to change much. Um, other way to do that, well, if we are shared assembly optimized kernels, like it, it happens in Ravi or in Ring, uh, again, we don't have the problem because uh, the number of symbols is small relatively small, and they are not going to change. Uh, if we want to, at the end, uh, export our Rust library so the rest of the world can use it, uh, we have an, a bunch of solutions to uh, make Cargo do the right thing up to a point, mainly because Cargo doesn't have an install target for libraries. So you need to do some integration. In the case of Kravi, that is uh, what Vimeo is using, there is a lovely, horrible make file uh, dealing with the installation part. Can we do better? Yes. So from those three examples, we can go a step further. So if Cargo is not having a proper install target, well, cargo can be extended, so what I did was extending cargo. We can make applets, so cargo would uh, happily call your program if you use the right name. And uh, all the bunch of uh, brittle, shady, horrible uh, hacks that I have to do to make Kravi work properly, well, I can hide most of it put in the applet and have awfully make the user uh, much happier. So we start from the um, really simple way or the um, really um, primitive way. So if you want to use auto tools, here is the recipe. You can use a C uh, check progs to uh, check for the Rust compiler and Cargo, write your M4 macros for that, or copy what is used already. In the automake, uh, you have to build your source of, well, the source variable with the list of uh, the dot rest files. So the automake is going to uh, copy and make is going to do a rebuild if you change something. Uh, you just uh, bind the static build name to a custom make target, so make knows what you want, and then everything is sort of like usual. Uh, you have to be careful because Cargo has its way to uh, produce the artifacts, so you have to put a bit more of, of logic that you would expect. And on the other side, 
you just call cargo, you use build that arrest to uh, capture from the environment set by uh, the make file all the variable that you care about, such as the version, if you need the version, or whatever. You just use the environment to uh, as an interface between the two build systems. Not great, but works. And then libtool is going to take care of all the details about doing the dynamic libraries. So you don't have the complexity to deal with. It works. They made a ready release of that. And uh, I mean, it's not that beautiful. I agree, but works. And as you notice, uh, it's customary to uh, have a, a special feature to uh, expose the part that is uh, the CABI or CAPI. So this is something that you can see uh, quite often, but works. <laughs> In their case, um, you have a situation in which you have some C code, some Rust code, some Rust uh, interface over other different C code. In this case, you have part of uh, GTK-RS used. So Cairo is used through that, through the Rust interface, the glib bits to get everything together are used that way as well. And they use cargo vendors. So a full uh, tarball can be used to compile and produce a proper library without having the need of uh, internet. They did quite a good job. What I did with Ravi. Ravi is a uh, heavy one uh, encoder. And since we need speed, we uh, share some of the uh, really tiny, small routines with David, that is uh, everyone decoder, but written mainly in assembly. I kid you not. So assembly from one side shared between two projects. So we are using NASM RS. We produce a static library with uh, small assembly bits, and then we refer to them from our Rust code. Uh, in build.rs, we just use this crate, and then uh, we tell Cargo, OK, this is the additional code that we want. We also use uh, Rust abstraction to C libraries when uh, we do our integration test. So the, we know that what the encoder produce, the decoders are able to decode. And in this case, we have just a really nice and simple Rust abstraction so we don't have to deal with the complexity. It's moved completely uh, far from us. So the first part, uh, well, you want to use a feature to uh, make so that if you don't want to have the assembly, you don't use it. Uh, in our case, we do a little more work in the builder.rs. It's something that you might need to do as well. So you produce, you pass some information from cargo to the assembly side, in this case, by building uh, your file. And then NASMRS is simple. You just pass a list of uh, assembly file and the library name. And then, uh, well, the remaining part is telling Cargo to link it and telling Cargo to be aware that if the assembly code change, it has to trigger a rebuild. So it's just a page of code, <coughs> not much how we use a symbol from assembly. There is still some boilerplate, but we have macros. So since the different symbols for the different sub-architectures, we want AVX, we want SEC, we want whatever, still the same thing, we have macros such as that that uh, make 
importing the symbol simpler. So you can cut the boilerplate this way. Or you could uh, make a tool that gets the definition from somewhere and build that for you as well. We have to keep in mind that automation is the key to actually uh, keep your sanity. So in our case, no, we don't have a binding generator that we can use, but we are using macro. Uh, we have NASM RS that is uh, doing most of the work in integrating NASM in the, our build system. We will use CC-RS to support ARM and ARM64 as well. We share code. But the sharing is simple just because uh, we are pretty much taking the file and keeping them in sync. You can be more creative. You can use get some module. You can do more. Uh, if uh, you are in a situation in which you have a big dependency, CMake-RS, AutoTools-RS uh, make your life much easier. If you are writing bindings to those libraries and you want to provide the user with a mean to uh, build the library within your crate, uh, this is the way and works. So we have our beautiful encoder and we have people that want to use it, but their code base is uh, C, Go, whatever, Python, we don't know. So they start pursuing you about, okay, we want a shared library because uh, that's what the system wants. So here how to do that the hard way. In CargoToml, you can tell the build system that you want to produce not just the Rust uh, binary or the Rust library, but the C dynamic library and the static library. In build.res, uh, you can use cbindgen to generate uh, the .h. So if you are like we are in a situation in which our API evolves a lot, you don't have to do twice the work to keep the symbol list in sync. Uh, I made a crate so all the logic to tell the linker, this is the platform, please do this, uh, is abstracted. So all the strange part is a separate crate, so you don't have to care there, but the problem still exists. And uh, since, uh, say, uh, cargo is good, but it's not great for this purpose, you need the, a proper install target. You probably would like to do integration tests, so you want some C code that builds with your library and prove that uh, everything works fine. So a make file was the simple solution, the easy solution. Ugly, I know. So our build address, we call the cbingen directly. And uh, again, we tell, we tell Cargo, OK, if something changed among those, please trigger a rebuild. All the part about uh, getting the proper shared library is just this line because, uh, well, <laughs> abstraction is good. And the make file, well, it's ugly. This is the part that you need to get the proper uh, PC file. And it barely managed to fit a slide. And the uh, make file, uh, well, you have to embed some logic in the make file because the make file is simple and doesn't give you all the information that you want. So welcome to um, a lovely way to express how to properly name your library. And when you're installing, again, some logic that you have to deal with. Depending on your operating system, you have to do something or something else. So, I say, this is the situation for Kravi that uh, 
works. Some people is using, some people is happy. It's a bunch of work. It's quite a bit of work. Uh, it's something that you would like to automate away. And uh, you have some paper cut directly from the Rust environment, mainly the native static libraries are uh, exposed in a, probably the most uh, brittle way that you would uh, expect. On standard errors, so if your build system consider anything on standard error something fatal, you have a problem. At the same time, you have, some, you have a lovely string, a lovely OS string that you have to parse to extract the information. Not great. We can do better. Uh, same thing when we are dealing with uh, cargo toml, because Makefile doesn't have a toml parser nor a JSON parser, so you can get away using grep and sed, like the old times. Uh, you can uh, add a, as a dependency a proper JSON query tool, so you can extract from cargo metadata. A bunch of work and feels brittle, it is brittle. Generating uh, the bindings themselves is not bad. CBindGen does the work. You don't have much to complain about it. You can use the configuration to make your API as nice as you want. Pretty easy, writing it is not bad. Maybe it's not perfect, maybe you want to uh, ask for more in some case, but uh, upstream is also quite supportive. But on the other side, if you have your C binding on one place and your main library on the other, when you change the API, you have to change it in two pla different places. So the change is not atomic. You don't have a single commit that say, okay, we are adding this feature, and this feature is available, but it's fine, but gets horrible when, okay, we are dropping this for good, and then one part is not up to date, so it's not going to build for a while. So you want to avoid that. And if everything is in the same tree, it's much easier to get it right compared when it is in two different repository and, well, it's nothing atomic in that case. So this is uh, more or less the end of the, this whole journey. So how to make it better with what we have? So I did this nice applet that uh, takes care of most of the details that I uh, bother you for the past 30 minutes. So everything is going to work. The install target exists. So you install the proper way and with proper way, I mean that you can set the proper library prefix, you can decide that the destination is for the installed uh, target is not the same as the place in which you would eventually put uh, your libraries. This is quite important if you are a, a distribution because when you make the package, you do not install it in the, in the live system. And, uh, well, the support is for most of the system I care about, plus the system I'm forced to uh, deal with. So there is some Windows support. Helping keeping it uh, alive is uh, welcome, because I'm not using it. Uh, it does a good job in integrating everything, so all the information stays just in Cargo Tomal, plus uh, tuning in uh, cbindgen.toml if you need to do something specific for the uh, C uh, header generation. And uh, compared to what you have, so you have your wonderful Rust, uh, pure Rust uh, library, and you want s the C consumer can use it, the change is quite minimal. Uh, it took me a couple of hours to get everything done for uh, Luton, that is the vor based pure Rust implementation. So eventually Firefox is going to use that. Uh, 
all you need is, uh, well, the crate has to have a lib target, but mm, I mean, it goes by, by itself. If you're using workspaces, your target uh, has to be the first in the workspace list. That means uh, sometimes that you have to have a dot as the first uh, item in your workspace. It is a shortcoming that hopefully I will fix, but uh, since I'm using cargo metadata, uh, I had to deal with that this way. Your C API has to be produced, so you can use uh, configuration uh, key to keep that code. So if your user are Rust users, do not, do not see that at all. If your user are C users, they just see that. And uh, the applet set for you a configuration flag. So that makes everything much simpler. And uh, this is a little constraint, but can be an annoying constraint if you want to replace uh, already existing uh, C library with multiple headers. Uh, currently, we can produce just a single header and a single library per crate. So if you want to replace something that split everything in multiple libraries, you have to make multiple crates. Uh, if somebody wants to help on improving the situation, please talk to me. Uh, why you want to use that? Well, you don't have to make uh, a build.rs. Or if you are in a situation in which your build.rs is already many pages, you don't have to add uh, other pages for just this. So the build.rs is not touched by Cargo C, so you can keep your logic there and it's not going to make your life complex. Uh, about complexity, everything is uh, hopefully uh, properly hidden from you. So all the spatial, subversion, whatever, whatever, whatever that you have to pass to the linker is not your problem, it's my problem. So you don't have to see that. All the part about generating the right PKVG config with uh, the proper syntax, you have a crate for that. Everything, uh, again, you don't have to uh, see uh, the gory details on how to get the static libraries to link uh, with the system and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, all you need in theory is to tell your user, okay, cargo install, cargo C, and then call uh, cargo C install to get your library installed, and that's it. So for your user, it's also much simpler because they have just to keep in mind two comments, and that's it. And uh, if you have to deal with the distributor, the distributor doesn't have to do much has to pass the proper desk deer and the proper lib deer if, had, if uh, they have to override it. So everything should be easy for everybody. Why I did that? Uh, well, I have more, multiple projects that would uh, be used by a C consumer, so I do not want to repeat myself. Uh, for Ravi itself, I say uh, double review and double release churn since I'm the release manager for that. Uh, again, I want to spare uh, some of my time. And uh, well, I, I'm not against make, but it's work. So if I can avoid that or avoid the user to uh, know about uh, pass, how to pass environment variable to make the proper way uh, better uh, for them and better for me because I won't see uh, bug reports about, hey, it's not installing properly because, and then you discover that their shell is doing something special. So in short, if you want to use this uh, nice toy, all you need to do is Put your C API somewhere in your uh, freight. SRC C API is one way, but I mean, you can be creative. Uh, 
Because of uh, Sib Engine, you have to make sure that it is the first module in your uh, 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 LibRS. So mod CAPI is the first one. You can use uh, CFG Cargo C to decorate that. So that part is just used for the C library. And then if you already did the work, if you already have something and you want to use that, well, you can copy over the C engine file and uh, that pretty much seals it. And after that, you make the release and well, hopefully your user can enjoy. In a slide, uh, that's all you need to do now uh, to have your proper library for Revy. So if you have any kind of need to encode with everyone, this is the way. Any question? Hello. Hi. Uh, this is a bit of a generic question. Okay. Uh, you say you work with uh, media, encoding, etc. Yes. Uh, what kind of performance hit would be considered acceptable when you are changing from C to Rust for the for the codec? Well, depends. If uh, you are careful, you have a speed boost. Oh. <laughs> I say. It, uh, if you're using the proper abstraction, the compiler can do a better job because knows better what you are doing. So you can uh, pretty much get better optimization. And keep in mind, since we are using LLVM on Rust-C and C-Lang, the theory would be that the optimizer is the same. The practice is that if you are careful, the optimizer can do a better job on the Rust side. Okay, so that's something that actually happened in production. Yes. It's not uh, just a theory. Thing. Uh, okay. In Revit, the um, predictors that are really tiny, small uh, bits of code uh, get octovectorized because the compiler knows <coughs> the actual size of the kernel. In the case of the similar C code in LibAOM, that cannot happen because the compiler is blind about that. Oh. And making it happen would uh, make the code uh, pretty horrible to follow because then you have to do, uh, well, C macro magic, and uh, mm. it's not exactly great. So uh, I say, nowadays, you can have a performance hit only if you are starting to pay for abstraction instead of having the abstraction work for you. So if you're using a normal for loop, each if the iteration is going to be an additional check to make sure that you are in the well within the memory boundary that doesn't happen in C in C but at the same time if you're using iterators if you are properly writing your code the same loop can be enrolled in an effective way can be even up to uh, octo vectorized if your uh, target support it so you are going to have an execution boost same logic, same code, different way to write it. So you have just to be careful. But there is something that uh, can be used before uh, going to rewrite everything in assembly. Oh yeah, thank you very much. No problem. Any other question? Uh, so um, I wonder if you run into problems when um, writing Rust code that depends on native C libraries, because as you said, there is no uh, mangling of C symbols. Um, unlike Rust, you cannot uh, include this, the same library into into a single build uh, uh, or like different versions of the same library. So if you would do that with C, you would have clashes of uh, of uh, C symbols basically. So I wonder if you haven't hit that problem. Well, uh, usually you don't hit the problem at all because the 
you have simple visibility in C. So if somebody has the wonderful idea of making the symbol foo, that is something internal, uh, still public, well, y first you can fix it. So you can hide it. But if it's part of the, the public API, then it's part of the public API. So if you have a clash, then that means that you have two different libraries that are using the same symbol. But in that case, the problem is in the libraries. It's not something that you have to solve in Rust. If you want to be creative, you can, uh, well, make your way using LTO or different kind of hacks or um, unwrapping the, the library and then relinking and doing this kind of uh, creative solution. Uh, I would suggest you to just discuss with the uh, two libraries upstream and uh, see if they can uh, properly namespace uh, their symbol. Because even in C, uh, you can just add a few more bytes to your symbol, like putting your library name and then underscore and then the symbol, and that's as effective as the namespacing. Not as mangling, but mangling has different kind of problems. Mainly, if you are too creative, you can have a few kilobytes as the name of the single symbol. That happens in C++, that can happen in Rust as well. So, you have trade-offs. Thanks. No problem. Other question? I guess we are set. We are set. Good. Okay. Thank you, Gluka.